Hello everybody, Jonathan here with Hidden Path Audio. Today we're truly excited to announce a brand new product, Orchestral Devices Battalion. The Orchestral Devices series is a brand new series that we've put together based on a contact instrument framework, which aims at combining traditional, non-traditional, and sound designed orchestral content in a really fun, unique way. The first installment, Battalion, is based off of the orchestral brass section. Content-wise, Battalion focuses on three main areas, traditional brass articulations, brass effects, of which we've recorded a huge wealth of, and sound designed content, which consists of hybrid manipulated samples and analog synth content, which complements the brass in a, in a cinematic way. This instrument is based in contact. It does require the full version of contact, not the free player and you'll need to be on version 5.6.8 of Contact or later, which includes version 6. Again, you do need the full version, not the free player. I'll talk a little bit about what our aim was with this product, and then we'll discuss the interface, and then we'll talk a little bit about the content and listen to some sounds. So our goal with the Orchestral Devices line of products, like I said, was to really present orchestral content in a bit of a different way, a little bit more of a sound design centric way that really allows you to, to experiment and come up with some interesting sounds that, that generally aren't that capable of, of, of getting through traditional means. The content that we've put together here consists of 135 individual sound sources. We've also included 250 presets with the instrument. Let's get into the interface a little bit because that, that will kind of explain our approach here in, 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 in the best way possible. So on the surface, you've got a four layer setup here with a with an X Y pad to blend between these four layers. Now, the X Y pad is optional, you can you can disable that and just set the volume in the individual instruments settings page. You can also control the X Y pad through MIDI CCs for each axis and you can designate what those CCs are. And then we do have a preset section up here where you can browse through several categorized folders that we've put together. I'll just go back to the init patch here. <clears throat> Each of the four layers represents one sound source and you can use up to any four. You can, you can mute, solo. If you just want to use one articulation, you can do that. Each of them have identical controls, and on the on the surface of the instrument here, you've got a big transpose knob, which is pretty important in, in voicing your ensemble. Uh, for instance, we've just got some staccatos layered up here. You can experiment by revoicing things very easily. And you can really spread out your ensembles, up to three octaves for each transpose knob. And we did stick with the essentially the true ranges of these instruments, uh, a little bit of stretching on either end to, to accommodate layering these things up. But um, generally, the, the ranges and the, the depth of the instrument is, is you know, true to form to what we sampled. So like I said, you've got mute and solo functions on each quadrant. You have a settings page for each of the quadrants. Now, the settings page is unique to each one. We'll take a look at that here. And so in the case of orchestral content, you have three mix positions available. You've got a close, a stage, or the full mix. Now the full mix takes up a bit less memory since it's a summed mix. But you can also combine the close and the stage. a couple audible differences there in the in the mixes you can mix them to taste or just by default the full mix will load up we also got a filter uh, different filter types available an EQ per the four sources a pan which is important in setting up your ensemble and then while we do have reverb on the effects page which I'll get to in a minute and and delay you can also dial that in 
as a send on each of the four sources. <clears throat> and this is important in case you have some elements of the ensemble that you do want to have reverb on and maybe some that you don't. We also have an envelope control here with attack, decay, sustain, release, your, your typical envelope controls. And like I said, each of the four sources has this settings page where you can go in and, and tweak uh, these parameters per the source. To choose your source is a drop down list here, uh, and it goes generally in score order. Uh, you can see we've got trumpet solos, trumpet ensembles, we've got French horn solos, French horn ensembles, trombone solo and trombone ensemble. Uh, we've got a low brass ensemble, which consists of tuba and two bass trombones. Get some good low end girth there. And then we do have two uh, banks of sound design content. So the hybrid uh, sound design, like I said, is is manipulated samples primarily, but it's sometimes layered up with, with other textures, but derived from the actual sample content. And then the synth category, um, which is analog hardware synthesis that we've put together to, to essentially complement the brass. Not necessarily emulate it, but, but complement. Some different, different types of sounds. your typical uh, trailer trailer types of uh, types of sounds so like I said each each of the four quadrants has a settings page now the next feature is a really fun one and it kind of really starts to, to see the capability of this instrument we've got a sequencer set up per per the four sources independent uh, sequencer for each of the four sources and you can sequence your pitch velocity and the filter filter cutoff so let me go to a I'm gonna go to a sequenced sound here just to kind of explain this a little bit <laughs> So you can see all four sources in this case are sequenced. Some of them are more simple sequence and then some more melodic, melodically complex. <clears throat> so the sequence also works nicely with the XY pad. Um, bring the mod wheel up a little bit. Also, it's it's a good to, thing to kind of point out how dynamics work with this product. Um, when you're not using the sequencers, dynamics kind of work as, as they would in any other traditional orchestral library. You have uh, short articulations typically are velocity sensitive. The harder you press the key, the louder they're going to play. Most of the long articulations, sustains, and long flutters or long effects um, tend to be mod wheel controlled for the dynamics. The one exception to all of that, though, is when you're using the sequencers. Uh, even though each sequencer has its own velocity uh, sequencer lane, the mod wheel will scale all of that. So you can still you can still scale the sequence dynamically, shape it with the mod wheel, which is a nice feature. And of course, in conjunction with the XY pad, you can even sort of orchestrate on some level uh, your your sequence as well as far as what instruments are are in the foreground or playing uh, more audibly so the sequencer also has a really really unique feature in that let me go to a let's go to another sound here
So one of the features of the sequence are also <laughs> got some some chaotic stuff. So one of the features of the sequencer is also random play direction. So one of the cool things that you can do with this is you can set your sequence, you know, the notes that you want to play. And you can even do this with, with this one's using cluster stabs and um, kind of a combination of, of mercados and clusters. And a random stabby, random random stabs, I think, like the name of the preset implies. So one of the things you can, you can even do this with sustains or anything that's tonal. You can create a sequence of notes and set the play, playback direction to random. What this allows you to do is actually get true aleatoric presets going out of this, which I, I, I don't know of many other uh, traditional orchestral sample libraries allow you to do. Um, there's a lot of libraries that have recorded aleatoric stuff, but every time you play that sample, you're going to get the same thing. With this, with this sequencer, you can you can get true aleatoric content here, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, let's try a, so some random falls here. even do do long things random random clusters things of that nature uh, let's see if we got a cluster swells so these are just sustains but we've kind of put little note sets together that will randomly create little clusters for you. So you can have a lot of fun with this sequencer. It really, really enables a lot of, uh, a lot of capability. <clears throat> and of course you can, you can also just do traditional sort of traditional sequencer, little ideas. So we've got 135 sound sources here all together, uh, 250 presets. And we'll kind of go through, let me actually go through a little bit more of the interface here. So as I said, we've got a sequencer page and these are, you know, independent per, per the four layers. And lastly, the, the effects page, I think it's the last thing I haven't really touched on. We've got uh, your, your typical array of effects, uh, delay, reverb, some distortions, uh, a global EQ, um, several different IRs that you can choose from different IR categories. So there's a, a pretty pretty wide array of effect shaping capability here. So that's the that's the interface in a nutshell. Um, let me get back into some of the actual sounds. So we have 250 presets. We've divided them into categories. The the core category is generally more of your sort of traditional ensemble articulations. Um, some pretty simple, you know, if you just want full marcados. <laughs> Also, you know, some different voicings and things like that. And since we have solos and full sections, we've also got some small articulations just built from all the solos. <laughs> things of that nature. We have the Alien Torque uh, category of presets. Uh, some of those, like the random ones that I've played for you, and then some others that are uh, sort of more instrument specific and some of these instrument specific categories uh, in the core and aleatoric um, they're either sort of layered in a way that's interesting or they present kind of an xy pad environment where you can switch up the articulation with the xy pad kind of on the fly or like i said they might just be layered like this trombone ensemble power is, is sort of layered up of different things <laughs> So 
So we've got our core presets, aleatoric presets, which is generally mostly effects-based, some of them with the random sequencing, some just a spattering of aleatoric effects. Um, we've got drones and pads, which tends to make a little bit more use of some of the uh, some of the hybrid categories of sounds, um, synth textures and things of that nature. some of the effects pretty heavily. atmospheric stuff great stuff for, for horror sci-fi sci dark mystery type of stuff um, some really great textural things there uh, we've got a few categories of sequenced presets which are a little bit more traditional uh, category here called ostinatos which tends to be sort of a little bit more um, pedal tone type of stuff uh, stuff that's not not say melodic but it does have a rhythmic sort of uh, structure Ostinatos, rhythmic ideas, good starters for things. And then sequences, we've got a bunch of different sequences. And these are more melodically sort of centered uh, types of things. These are more little melodic snippets, phrases, ideas, sort of motivic idea generators. And then the last several categories are a little bit more in the realm of the, the hybrid sound design content. Um, you know, we've got uh, pulses, downers, risers, and then a, a sort of grab bag of different hybrid, hybrid stuff, utilizing both hybrid content, synth content, and a lot of the brass effects. And then we have a few things like some of these riser uh... and some downer downer patches here. Sorry, my video software is pushing my computer a little harder than it wants to be. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, we've got a, a lot of different categories. Also some pulses, which are sort of rhythmic stuff derived more from the hybrid content than sort of anything else here. But um, kind of play through a few of these types of things. <laughs> the sequencers. So that rounds out the preset categories uh, pretty well. Again, a wealth of stuff in here to check out and a lot of great starting points, but we read we also, you know, you can also save your own preset. We definitely, uh, you can create your own folders, curate your own content. Um, it really, it's really the type of instrument that invites a lot of experimentation and just layering things up, playing with different sounds, moving them around on the keyboard, transposing things, and, you know, create some really truly unique combinations. So that's Orchestral Devices Battalion in a nutshell. We hope you guys enjoy and got a lot out of this video. We have some audio demos on the website and we'll have some more reviewer content and other video content coming out pretty shortly. This is uh, currently available on the, on the Hidden Path Audio website. Um, we are doing an introductory promo with audio plugin deals exclusively. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, July 6th, there'll be They'll be dropping the, the big promo campaign for the introduction of this instrument. And yeah, we'd love to hear what you guys think. We'd love to hear kind of music you guys come up with with this. And we hope you enjoy. Until next time. Thank you. <laughs>